Hey, today I'm going to be showing you how to install end stops and calibrate your small desktop CNC engraver. Let's go. When I installed the end stops onto my CNC engraver, I followed an excellent tutorial by Bogdan Berg. The links to that post, the 3D files on Thingiverse, and the needed supplies are all in the description below. For the supplies, you're going to need uh, some M3 T slot nuts, some M3 and M2 size bolts and nuts, some roller switches, some female DuPont connector jumper wires, some light gauge hookup wire, and some heat shrink tubing. You're also going to need to have access to a soldering iron and some solder. A multimeter could also be handy for checking the solder connections. Uh, you need some basic hand tools like pliers, wire cutters, or a sharp knife. Uh, the hex wrenches you need should have come with your CNC kit. Most importantly, you're going to need access to a 3D printer or some type of 3D printing service to fabricate the plastic parts. One quick thing to note is that I installed five stops onto my CNC. To enable the homing function, you only need to install three. The first step in this process is to make up the wiring for the switches. I'm sorry I didn't record this part, but it's not really that hard. You just need to measure out two strands of wire that will comfortably reach from the control board to each of the switch locations. Um, I placed both of my Y stops on the same side as the electronics to make routing a little bit easier. For the Z axis, you have to make sure you have enough slack to allow for the head to move through its full range. Uh, for each switch, solder one wire onto the C or the common terminal and one wire to the NO or the normal open terminal. On the other end, cut a female DuPont jumper in half and then solder one to each wire. Some heat shrink tubing makes for a neater job and helps keep the wires from grounding out. Now one at a time, you want to mount the switches onto the plastic parts, making sure you get the right length wires on the right stops. So, using the M2 bolts and nuts. Don't tighten them all the way yet, just snug them up so they don't move a whole lot. Um, the X and Y stops get mounted to the carriage using the M3 bolts and T-slot nuts. The mounting uh, direction is fairly intuitive on these. Uh, the Y stops do need to be mounted to line up with the little plastic tab parts that also mount into the bottom of the main deck. The upper Z stop mounts between the Z axis stepper motor and the carriage housing using the bolts that are already in the machine. You just have to take out those spacer bushings and slide the part underneath the motor. Now, for the, the important part really is once you get your rough locations figured out, you make, need to make sure that the switches trip before the parts of the machine collide. So you want to manually move the axes until you hear the switch click without the machine actually contacting itself. This may take a little bit of trial and error, but once you find the right spot, tighten the, swats, the, the stops and the switches firmly. Once your switches are all in place, you can carefully route the wiring along the frame and you can zip tie it in place. Um, wiring to the most of the control boards I've seen, the one I have, is straightforward um, as they're usually labeled pretty well. Um, one thing is polarity doesn't really matter. Uh, the pins work in an up-down pairs. The entire bottom row of the pin header is a ground, so just take one pair at a time push one of the DuPont connectors onto its upper pin and another one onto the ground. Just make sure that your X wires go to the X pins and your Y pins go to the, the Y connectors and so on. Once you have the wiring complete, it's time to make some firmware changes to let the machine know that you've made some changes. Power on the machine and plug its USB into your computer. Open your G-Code Sender software and connect it to the machine. I'm using Candle here, but um, other Sender software is similar. Whenever I make changes to the machine firmware, I like to make a manual backup of the settings. If your machine is in the lock state, reset it and unlock it using the control buttons in the software. 
Then go to the console part of your sender program and type in two dollar signs and hit enter. This will list all the currently configured variables in your CNC's EEPROM. Click and drag over the result to the point where you typed in the two dollar signs. Right click and copy. Open Notepad or another text editor and paste the settings into it. Save and preferably print out this file as a backup. The particular settings that we're interested in are numbers 21, 22, and 23. Variable 21, when set to 1, enables hard limits so that when the machine hits any stop, it will actually stop and enter into an alarmed lock state. This keeps the machine from crashing into itself. Sometimes this can be a bit annoying, but it does provide for some safety. Variable number 22 enables the homing cycle when set to 1. Variable 23 is a bit mask that tells the machine what corner to actually home to. Setting this variable to 1 is at the back right corner. To actually set these variables, go back into your G-Code Sender software and go to the console area. Enter dollar sign $21 equals 1 and press enter. Do the same for variables 22 and 23. These are automatically saved into the machine's EEPROM. You can verify this by entering the two dollar signs again and checking the output. Now you should actually be able to home your CNC. Just as a small side note, if the machine goes into a lock state, you can press reset and unlock to clear it. Now onto the basic calibration of the machine. In your CAD CAM software of choice, design a 100mm by 100mm square project. You need it to cut in about 3mm deep on the outside of the square. Using a piece of scrap material, run that project to completion. Clean the dust off the project, use some calipers to measure the actual size of the resulting square. Try to measure straight to avoid the parallax and take several measurements across the, the depth of the project to try to average out your, your measurements. Write down your average results when taking and make sure you take note of the X and the Y direction as to which one you're measuring. Now we have to do some basic math. There are two variables that determine the number of stepper steps to move the tool one millimeter. In my stock firmware, they were both set to 800. Yours may be different. If it is, adjust the math accordingly. All we're gonna do is solve for the correct ratio for the current settings versus the expected result. In this slide, the 800 is the current variable setting. The 100 is the expected result from our G-code file. Replace the actual with your measurement and then solve for X. This should get you close to the right setting. Once you have your new steps per millimeter numbers for both X and Y, go back to your G-code sender software and enter them in the same way as we did with the end stops. Now, just simply wash, rinse, and repeat.
run the 100 by 100 project file on a new piece of scrap and test the settings and measure. You may have to do this several times before completely dialing the machine in. Okay, now for the naked truth about these machines. Before you beat yourself up trying to calibrate them, please note these machines are not that solid. I don't know how well it shows in the video, but under tension the spindle can move quite a bit. This inherent instability makes accuracy completely uncertain. Okay. Only thing I can say is slow feeds and speeds, very small diameter tools can help mitigate this, some of it, but not all. I hope this helped everybody and um, happy CNCing.